About two years ago, in early 2013, I was walking around the William Morris Gallery just down the road from me and I found this leaflet, Chance for Socialists by William Morris. I knew quite a bit about the arts and crafts side of William Morris but I knew a little less about his political side. I really liked the title, I thought it was the, the kind of title that you wouldn't find on a record or a book now. Very, very bold, very divisive. It reminded me of my late teens when I became interested in music and politics. And at the time there were things like Red Wedge, I saw Billy Bragg play, which was a big influence on me. I brought a guitar after seeing Billy Bragg and I was very excited and at the time left field music and left wing politics seemed to belong together much more than perhaps they do now. Chance for Socialist is, is a set of lyrics written by William Morris. They are to be sung to the tune of your choosing or the popular tune of the day. Um, I sort of imagined this, this set of lyrics behind a sheet of glass which would say break glass in times of emergency like William Morris was providing a, a little time capsule for when it was needed. It's hard to adapt these words. Um, in fact it was hard sometimes because Morris writes in such a very pretty, very beautiful but also verbose and elliptical way. It was sometimes hard for me to even extract the meaning in certain lines. And I like to think of my use of words as being quite sparing and direct, at least that's at least that's what I try and do. Um, so in some cases I was quite faithful to his words, in the opening song certainly on the album, uh, Awake London Lads. Wake London Lads Wake bold and free, arise and fall to work. Look through the fog of unjust wars and let our poor hearts learn. Our starving men, our women's tears, the graves of those we love. In fact, it was so hard to adapt these songs that I realised I needed help, really. I, I realised it was perhaps beyond me to, to adapt all ten. Robert Rotifer helped me. He did uh, Down Among the Dead Men. Down Among the Dead Men Down Among the Dead Men Down Down Long also um, 
helped me by adapting the message of the March wind. And I think that's kind of obvious that I had much less of a hand in that. Um, it's really fun singing and arranging um, chords and music which someone else has written for me and also um, lyrics which aren't my own. At the top of this title it says agitate and organise. I didn't want this album to be a rallying call or a manifesto, even though I guess William Morris may have in part intended it to be. I wanted it to be like a comfort to people like me, maybe people who perhaps used to be a little more engaged with politics. I, as I say, the title and the words initially just reminded me of my teenage years when I was more politically active than I am now. So in a way I wanted this to be almost like, as I say, a comfort, a solace for lefties. Perhaps it should have been called lullabies for socialists or something like that. The homes of ancient stories, the tombs of mighty dead, the wise men seeking marvel. The poets team in head, the painter's hand of wonder, the marvellous fiddle bow, the banded choirs of music, all those that do will know. We For me, socialism is about community. I wanted people to get a strong sense of community from the record. So, I chose people from this community, here in Walthamstow, to sing the songs down at the William Morris Gallery. I was very indiscriminate about who came. Anyone was welcome. It wasn't about ability. And it was fantastic. Usually when I try and get a, a group or a choral sound, we do it in the studio by just overdubbing five people, you know, several times. But this, but that's a, it doesn't really work, that's a different sound. So, so great to have 30 or so different voices singing these songs. And also so great to be able to record in the William Morris Gallery, his childhood home. I'm increasingly enjoying making the connection between the lyrics, the messages of the songs, and then the locations in which I either write them or record them. Um, I very rarely spend time in recording studios now. There's so much technology available for us to be portable. You can record an album on an iPad or an iPhone if you want to. Uh, on my previous albums, Lido, I recorded the, the, inside the swimming pools, but also recorded the locations of where swimming pools used to be. I recorded the absence of swimming pools. Um, and it was very important to me in the recording of The Violence, my album about the Essex Witch Trials, to also go to the locations there and write songs there. It makes a difference to me. So I took this idea further and we also recorded some group vocals at Kelmscott House in Hammersmith. 
Kelmscott House is the home of the William Morris Society and it's where William Morris lived uh, towards the end of his life. It's where he was more political. In the coach house where we recorded is where he held the meetings of the Socialist League. Gustav Holst performed there. So once again, really great to have um, a direct connection with the political life of William Morris. We also discovered that William Morris had a piano, and that piano still existed at Kelmscott Manor, um, a large country house further down the Thames in a village called Kelmscott, from which he took the name for his press and his two homes. And so there I recorded his broken, worn out piano. We were also privileged to be allowed to use William Morris's letterpress, the Kelmscott Press, which he used to print the Common Wheel and his edition of Chaucer. Um, so the actual LP sleeves were printed there on his press. This design taken from the borders of um, his Chaucer. So we've been really blessed with the generosity of the William Morris Society, the William Morris Gallery, Kelmscott House, Kelmscott Manor, and that's also fitting for a record about socialism, a record about community. Ooh, we get the message Listen clear We marched upon them And they put death in our mouths From east to west From west to east We marched back home to the ones we know and love Not one, but thousands they slay If they darken the day, darken the day Not one but thousands they slay if they die.